Hello, hello. Hi. Are you good? Are you having a good day? Yeah. Great. You've just been talking to Mark Hadlow, haven't you? Yeah. Never mind. No, he's fabulous and a wonderful person to have in the film with us too. Um, so I was uh, told that there might be questions and things like that. Some of the questions I get asked are things like, what's it like to work with Peter Jackson? And uh, I'm just trying to remember. Um, no, he's fantastic. He really is a, a genius, as people say. Other people have asked me, um, what's Benedict Cumberpatch like? And I can assure everybody here that he is exactly what all the young ladies think he is. He's tall, he's gorgeous, he's very urbane, has a lovely voice, and when he's talking to you, you would swear you were the only person in the room. Absolutely wonderful. Um, Ian McKellen, what a fantastic, wonderful man he is. Very courageous man, and uh, he's done a lot of work for uh, people who are gay, who are wanting to come out and that kind of thing. Absolutely amazing. He did a tour of New Zealand. I don't know if you got to see him raising funds for a, uh, the renovation of the theatre, the Isaac Theatre. Uh, fabulous man. Martin Freeman, a really, really lovely man. Again, a really good family man and a man who is totally devoted to his craft. Really, really works hard. He's very, very funny, and he has got the dirtiest mouth of any human being I have ever met. Just disgusting. <laughs> yeah, really. So, um, look, who's got any questions? Yeah. I really am going deaf, so I can't quite hear. Where, where'd the idea come from to make Oin the medic? Okay, before we started shooting, um, we were all asked to make contributions and offers to talk about the kind of things we would like to see in the characters. And so I teamed up with the actor who plays my brother in the film, uh, Peter Hamilton, who plays Gloin, and we had a talk about things. Um, I thought it would be quite a nice idea. Peter Jackson thought it would be quite a nice idea. Um, do you know what an apothecary is? He, okay, well, in the olden days, an apothecary also used to act as a midwife. And there was a suggestion that Peter and I worked out that maybe Oin had been at the birth of Gimli and had probably dropped him on his head which would account for what you see in the Lord of the Rings. Uh, we were allowed to make lots of um, contributions, if you like, some of which were used, some of which weren't. I thought it would be a really good idea to have a, a satchel full of lotions and things like that, uh, which turned out to, every single day I put it on, it was heavier than the day before. It was bizarre. Uh, that's something else actually, the costumes were incredibly heavy. It's very hot in here, or is it just me? I think it's menopause, that's what it is. I'm going through menopause. No, the, uh, the costumes were incredibly heavy. I don't know if Mark talked to you about that, did he? But uh, yes, with the fat suits and the wool and the leather, uh, my basic costume was 28 kilograms. And there was one day when we were in the pouring rain with extra bags and blankets and my stunt man, a brilliant man, he, um, he went and weighed himself because he was wearing the same as me and he said that we were carrying 53 kilograms through a 16 hour shooting day, yeah. So I am now incredibly skinny. Before I started I barely needed a fat suit. So it's a really good way if you want to lose weight, okay? Get dressed up as a dwarf and run around the hills. Strathtyere, we were running around there for weeks it seems like. Did he talk about scene 88? My God, yes. Well, that was probably one of the worst. And people ask me what my favorite scene was and I think every single one of us would give the same answer. Um, and that was shooting the barrel scene. That was amazing. Just out of Nelson in the Polaris River, it was freezing, literally freezing. Um, but there wasn't 
single one of us who wasn't going to do it. We had all these stunties ready to jump in the barrels for us. We had other stunties who were in the water to save us. And one of the things they did was put a cable right way across the river, two of them, one just at the surface level and one a little bit further down, so that if we actually got caught in the flow and were heading downstream, that would stop us. But there were two of us, I was one of them, and uh, the other was the bomber, Stephen Hunter, and we went down and sure enough we got caught in the tide, the current, and we hit the cables and the bottom of the barrels swung under the cables, nearly took our faces off, and off we headed downstream. Which in itself wasn't a problem, except for the fact that between where we are here and maybe two thirds of the way down this room, there was a huge waterfall. And uh, luckily they had three power boats, you know what RIVs are, rigid inflatable boats, and they came to our rescue, which was, uh, which was very nice. They could have saved themselves a lot of money by just letting us go, but um, no, they rescued us. Decent people, eh? Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yes? Well... Uh, 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 I just want to know, and um, I just want to know if, if there were any mishaps during life, that it was a barrel scene. Were there any accidents or drownings or what happened? Um, were there any accidents or drownings? Not really, no, no. There were one or two people we wanted to drown, but um, uh, no, we didn't. Um, well, they weren't in the cast. The cast were lovely, Barry. No. Uh, look, after we'd been shooting on the Polaris, did Mark tell you about what happened with the weather and having to get out of there? Okay. And we went to, uh, a little while later, to a kind of built... You've heard about that too. We all thought, actually, that this log flume with the barrels would be the ride at Hobbit World Disneyland. It would, it would be fantastic. But when we were in that, there were one or two very minor injuries. In fact, Mark himself um, had his arms outside the edge of the barrel and the water was being pumped through uh, a big tube and the tube could move up or down. And when it came up, the water was more choppy and he got pushed right up against the rocks around the side of the um, of this uh, river and uh, he caught his arm between the rocks and the barrel and hurt himself under here so we took him out but he was fine, he was fine. Uh, there was one point where the director said to me as we were coming around, okay John I want you to look up, I want you to see the waterfall and then whoo, duck down as if you're going over the edge. Uh, and I did that, and that was fine, and we did it again, and that was fine. He said one more time, did it a third time, and ducked down and came up right underneath the camera that was on a crane and came over the middle of the river. Smashed my head, and um, we went around. They said, oh, are you all right, John? Are you all right? And I said, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, well, look, we've got the shot. We're finished for the day. And I thought, okay, fine. Uh, went downstairs, it was a little bit sore, and then they took my wig off, and they took my beard off, and then they started taking my false face off, and all this ball up had just came running down my face. But in fact, it was a nick that was about, you know, a quarter of an inch, if that. So it wasn't, that was the worst thing that happened really on the entire shoot. In fact, talking of my face, could you pass me that box, please? Thank you. No doubt you've all heard of the Beatles, have you? Have you heard of Eleanor Rigby? Have you? Have you heard about the people who keep their face in a jar by the door? face in the box 
under the bed. That is uh, one of the prosthetics, which I had to nick because we weren't allowed to have them. At the end of every day, when they were taken off, they tore them apart so that nobody could steal them. So what I'm going to do is put it in the box and pass it around. If you want to have a look at it, obviously you can. Um, feel it as well, because it actually feels like a cross between human skin, pig skin, and a dead sandwich. <laughs> and it has been suggested that I could actually, if I ever miss lunch, use it as such. Except it's made of silicon. So there we are. Since you are uh, giggling the most, you can have a look at that. Um, one of the, I mentioned my, um, can I have that jacket? Thank you. I mentioned my stuntman, Ike Hayman. Ike um, is a, a brilliant stuntman. Can you all hear me? This sounds like it's booming an awful lot. Um, has anybody seen a film called The Hurt Locker? Yeah. All the stunts in that film were done by one man. And that one man turned out to be my stuntman, I came up. And when we finished, um, when we finished shooting as a going away present, he gave me this jacket. Um, the Team Oil jacket. It's, uh, it's got the number 13 on one sleeve. When you are making a film, each day there is a call sheet and all the actors are numbered. I happen to be number 30. Um, I'm glad to say that I was an awful lot higher up the list than Sylvester McCoy or uh, Billy Connolly, fantastic, but not as high as Ian McKellen. Um, and so what he put on the other sleeve was the name of the actor, Callum, his name, Heyman, and the third name, Willoit, is the name of my scale double. Did Mark talk to you about scale doubles? Yeah. And uh, she was a young woman from Salt Lake City who was uh, actually a choir teacher, but she had so much energy. One day when we were shooting in Bard's house, and uh, I hope you've seen the second film in Bard's house, they're trying to save poor old Kiwi. And um, uh, there we are, the orbs come in. And this young lady, Kelly Willowett, spent the morning fighting an orc. And then I had to go in and I had to do close-ups. And I had to do the whole thing on my knees. I spent five hours fighting orcs on my knees. They were bleeding by the end of the day. And so um, I told her that if she was ever doing anything else, please, please stay in the background, preferably with your feet up. And that would suit me an awful lot better than having to be too energetic. Brilliant. Hello. Fantastic. See that? Food. Wonderful. We, um...